I'm Janice Hostegger. After three decades in the marketing business and many years of being an entrepreneur, I've learned a thing or two about marketing. Join me as we talk about marketing, small business, and life in between. Welcome to My Weekly Marketing. Hey, hey, and welcome to episode six of My Weekly Marketing. If you have a website for your business on WordPress or any other platform, really, you're going to want to hear this because today we're talking about website security. Nobody knows exactly how many websites get hacked, but expert opinion is around 90,000 WordPress websites per minute. Of course, all websites are target for hackers, not just WordPress. WordPress just happens to be a little more of a target because it's such a popular platform for small business owners. So today, my guest is Lori Martin. Lori's been a website developer for many years and owns a company called Double Fox Websites. She's going to talk to us about some simple things you can do to protect yourself with your website, whether your website is on WordPress or any other platform. So tell me about your business and what you do. So I started Double Fox Websites in 2008, and I first got into the internet space back in the mid-90s when it wasn't even a space. I was just doing kind of a, what we what we would call the first SEO for businesses. I worked for um, Guard.com and Digital Cheetah, and then I found my place, which was just trying to help people in the small business community leverage their, leverage the online community, just be able to do those things. And SEO, for anybody that does not know, is search engine optimization because we build websites, not just for customers, but also for the search engines, right? Yeah. Is that right? All right. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So when, when I first started doing was the very earliest part of SEO and I got these businesses online at Yahoo listings and um, these different listings that people don't even know about anymore. But now I am moving to small businesses. That's awesome. Okay, so now you have a website company that builds fabulous websites, but you have a passion for security because obviously this day and age, security is a big deal with a website, with everything online, right? Well, I became passionate about security um, early on when I got so many websites, so much business that had been breached and breached in a traumatic way so that they wouldn't, that like Google actually blacklisted them. And one of the ones that was really eye-opening, and I'm just going to say I'm a WordPress girl. So I'm just all about mm-hmm. WordPress. That's what I do and I build. And WordPress owns about 40% of the market share in, in content management systems, meaning that if you have a website, you're going to use some sort of platform. And WordPress is open source and it's one of the biggest ones out there. So when I talk about the things I talk about, it's going to be primarily WordPress, even though I've been involved with Drupal and Weebly and and Wix and Square, I'm always going to talk about WordPress. So one of the things that really was eye-opening for me and that really got me into the security area was I was working with a contractor and this contractor their manager sent me emails, very good communications, beautiful contractor. But when I would eat, when I would click on the link in their email, it would always send me to a pharmaceutical company. Mm-hmm. And so I would I said to them, well, can you send me an email? Just send me the link to your website so I can see, because I just want to see, you know, what's going on, like what um, before and afters, some of your projects, some of your work. but She said, well, it's there in the email. And then it became obvious that they had been breached, they had been hacked. And so if you were an admin user or if you were looking on Google, you would see their website. But if you looked 
anywhere else you would get this pharmaceutical company. Hmm. So this was a very advanced breach that I was very shocked about, but it was very eye-opening. So that's when I really got into it. So when I created my first WordPress site, I installed a plugin that allowed me to get an email whenever um, someone tried to hack my site. And I thought it would be kind of interesting to see, oh, if someone tried to hack my site today. What I wasn't ready for was that I started getting emails about attempted brute force hacks about every hour or more. I mean, it was constant, just over and over and over again. And I was really blown away. Um, it's brute force is that, which is where people just try and figure out your, your password and try and log in pretending to be you. Do you know if that's the most common type of vulnerability or when do most websites or how do web, most website vulnerabilities happen? Well, there's um, there are several ways and I just want to talk about passwords because I have a an analogy. I like using analogies because I think people can see them as well but you picture your big castle and you have got your hundred foot stone um, walls around you and you have got a moat around you and have got a drawbridge. You've got security around you. And then little old me walks up on my donkey (laughs) and has the right password and the drawbed bridge goes down and I just enter. So passwords are a really big deal. And they are, when you were talking about your brute force attack and stuff, these are the things that um, that these servers are going to be trying to do. And they're not like they're they're robots. They're not humans doing this stuff. Um, So your password, if you think about your password, if you have another analogy, if you have a password of one character, and let's limit it to just the numbers. You've got zero through nine, so that's 10. You've got 10 digits. And a person could hack that in no time, as could a computer. And if you turn that into two digits, two areas, even we're just limiting to numbers, you've got 10 times 10, you're going to remove some of the um duplicates so let's say you've got 90 and then every time you add another value it becomes harder and so i looked into this and so where my number so um if you so if you look at your keyboard you have 10 numbers and 52 letters because we're talking about lower and uppercase and maybe like approximately 32 different characters. So those are all spaces that you can use. And so a 12 character string is estimated to be taking 7.5 million years to figure out. Wow. Right? Seven characters is about nine minutes. Most people don't think about that. But there's also... The computer, the server, the hacker is going to be looking at common passwords. There's published common passwords out there. And the first Hmm. thing they're going to do is look at those common passwords. And they're also going to look at things that are associated with you, such as your name, your username, your company name, your dog's name, anything out there. That's Hmm. how it becomes... That's how they can break it down. Because you think if a 12-character string takes 7.5 million years, that's not going to happen unless they know something about you. So your passwords are so important. Like I said, me walking on my donkey up to your castle that has all the fortification possible I'm walking up, and if I have the password, I'm getting in. Right, right. So that's like the weak, the weakest link, basically, is that if your password. For sure. I mean, obviously, your your website has to have the security in place, but that's the first place people are going. And when you say brute force attacks and those kind of things, 
they're going after your password. Mm -hmm. And so you just want to make sure that you have a very strong password and don't reuse your password. I use a password vendor and there's like, there's plenty out there. I use RoboForm. There's what, a, what there's a bunch like of like LastPass or some of the no, others. They're all other. But the okay. good thing about using them is that when you know your password is breached, you can also search in your forms what password was breached and you can change all of those. So if you're still using the same password, you can change it. And I learned now that I don't even use the same password ever. Mm-hmm. But if you're using the same password, then you know which which sites you need to change. So what you're saying is if somebody wanted to break into my website or, or hack my website, all they would have to do is basically maybe go on social media and find out a little bit about what I, where I live maybe. Um, so you're mm-hmm. saying that, that even, or if, if I have pictures of my dog or my kids or anything where I include names that they're going to maybe try those if they wanted to, they really wanted to break in. Um, what about things like phone numbers and zip codes? I mean, all of those things are kind of leave you too vulnerable. Do you, th- do you think all of them, all of them, like it's, you know, and they're, and you know, these guys, like the hackers are not going after you personally mm-hmm. for the most part, um, unless you're an Amazon or something, but they're, you know, they could go after you and find this information and, you may be breached and you don't even know it. They're just using your website, your server to do other stuff. I had one client come to me and her website was full of Arabic information. Mm-hmm. She looked at it every morning and saw just nothing but Arabic stuff. So so what else can we do with our websites? So, okay, a strong password, that's number one. What else can we do with, we'll say WordPress because, um, you know, it is the most common one out there, although uh, I'm sure some of these these apply to other types of websites too. But what is your next recommendation? All right. So, yeah, passwords are really, really big. Don't send them over email. Um, Email is not encrypted for the most part. So when, if you, if you thought you would ever send your Social security number, plastic envelope, don't, that's what you're doing. So don't send your email, your passwords or anything like that to separate okay. them at least. You know, your password name, your password email if you have to do it, but it's not encrypted. So keep that okay. safe. Your domain name, make sure you know where your domain name is registered. That's a big one. Um, and have a strong password that's associated with wherever your domain name is registered. Where your domain name is registered doesn't mean that's where your website is hosted. It just means that's where you've got your password or your domain name listed. When you go to reserve your domain name, if it's like godaddy.com or or some of the many, many other sites out there, that's separate from where your website is actually hosted sometimes sometimes it's not sometimes yeah, it's the same absolutely absolutely and there's a there's a reason to have it separated um your domain name and your website and your email especially your email you don't want it hosted with your website because if your website goes down so does your email so oh, those separate right. but absolutely no where your, your domain name is registered because okay. that is the key to your website. I've had clients come to me and say, we can't move our website and somebody has control of the registration. and <laughs> I can't do anything about it because it's, you know, whoever registered it. So I don't like to register for my clients. I don't like to register their domain name. I will do that, but I always recommend that they have control over their domain name because that's that's the real key right there. Number three, is there number three? I want your website to be serving up as HTTPS, which means you have an SSL certificate. 
SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer, and it's just going to deliver the communication between somebody looking at your website and your website. It's going to be encrypted. So when you, as the website owner, when you log into your website, you're going to your your password information. That's all going to be encrypted, so it's safe and secure. And that's what you want. And anybody who adds information to a form or anything, it's all going to be secure. So you want to have that SSL. And what can happen is you can have an SSL certificate, but some of the possibly images on your website or other things were not added in secure form. And so what you'll see when you look at your website and you're going to look at the browser the browser address and you look in the top left and you'll either see a a log icon or you may see a big red strong no nope, not locked which means you don't have SSL security or you may see a little triangle there that says we're secure, but not totally secure. And that means that some of the items on your website were not added in SSL mode. So how do you change something like that? And that depends on what it is. But what I've seen, and this is just me, what I've seen is you can go into your media library and just add an S to the image. Like there's different images oh. you can add add an S to the URL, but. Um, so that would be images that are posted, that are that are hosted on another site that you just are pulling in from another site. They're not uploaded to your site per se, correct? They were uploaded to your site, but not in secure mode. So sometimes it's oh, simple, okay. as simple as just adding an S mm -hmm. to and I, that's all I can speak to. I can't tell, you know, talk about all the other things, but that's a possibility. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. And another big one is do not allow everybody to have admin access. And I'm talking about WordPress, but whatever your website is, whatever you're using, make sure that all of your users have their own login and restrict who has access to the higher end. So in WordPress, admin means that people can add plugins, they can add code, they can totally destroy your site. So we restrict who has admin access completely, but just make sure that you don't give everybody admin access. Great advice. And I think oftentimes we'll do that, right? If you have somebody that's helping you with something. Yeah. Um, you, or you might give them your own password. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and just say, oh, just log in under me. But you're saying that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea because you want to be able to see in the logs who did what. Mm -hmm. And so at least if it's separated, you can say, okay, this person did this. This person tried to update this, whatever it was. It's very yeah. important to have different logins and different access. And admin access should only be top level people that you want to be able to do things like in our company, we only allow admin access for our company. Okay. And nobody else gets admin access because we don't want them to be adding plugins, which will be our next conversation. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, right. It's like there's a lot out there. There's so much to talk about. So I guess that brings us to the next question you're going to ask. Yes. It was about plugins. I mean, oh, how do you yeah. know if you have a vulnerability in a plugin? Plugins are, so let's say that, and um, like I said, I'm a WordPress girl, but plugins are, um, they're written by you and me and 
all of us out there. And some of them are supported and some of them are not, but they are, they can provide great functionality, but they're also vulnerable. So you just want to make sure that the plugins that are out there, they are tested with WordPress and WooCommerce normally, but they're not tested with the thousands of plugins that are out there. So you can have, you can just think about kids on the playground <laughs> and you add more and more and more and they're not all going to get along. And gotcha. that's what it is with plugins. They can be great with WordPress and with WooCommerce, but they may not get along with the other ones. So you get, you get conflicts and vulnerabilities. So you just have to be very careful and it's critical to keep your plugins and software up to date. And as you mentioned, is it automatic or not? Um, you just have to choose. If you have, I wouldn't do anything automatic unless I felt it was secure. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes what we normally do is when we add a plugin or we update a plugin, we wait for a few versions on. So anything like 4.1, 5.1, 3.1, those are big, those are big ones. But mm -hmm. if you go a few versions over, they have got through the bugs. So we don't typically add the plugins or update the plugins when they're first added. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was actually wondering about that because I think um, be, I, I was under the impression that if there was an update, that it was important, like it may be a security patch or something like that. And I should be right on top of it, updating that plugin to make sure everything works as it should. And maybe it says that in the update to like, this is a security patch or this is just some updates. So my thought was, well, if I click this box, then it's an automatic update. And that seems like the most prudent thing to do. What you're saying is maybe just check your your site every so often, go through and see what plug, plugins need updating, and maybe just hold off on, on some of those. Yeah, so there's definitely, I've seen the security patches and updates and those are the ones that you definitely want to take care of right away but the major changes the major versions so if you're going from a one to a two to a three to a four those are ones you could probably hold off on a bit okay. because they have a few more bugs so normally if there is a version that goes from a like a one point something to a two point something then that's a major Right. But um, let's say I need a plugin for something on my site. What I normally do when a client wants to see a plugin and add it, I look at the reviews and I look at the updates and I look at how long it's been going. Okay. And then we can try it. Um, if it's a really new plugin, I probably won't even try it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you just don't know if it's going to be supported. Um, and especially the free plugins, you know, you're you're using a free plugin and whoever created it probably has a side job doing something else. And mm -hmm. it might not be supported in a year or two's time. So just think about that. Okay. Just kind of Google reviews and and do your research before adding anything yeah. to your site. One thing I really hate is the recaptcha on forms, you know, having to click those little yes. pictures that have the bridge or, or have the flags or whatever, you know. How important is it to have those on your forms? And it, is it more trouble than it's worth? Or what do you think? I would always have them. Um, it's, I know they're, they're a pain, but just like passwords are a pain. Um, I have had clients who have had comments and guest books open that people can add things, add their comments, their 
the reviews mm-hmm. not published, but it still fills up with spam immediately. I had one client that we had to shut it down and he had over 600 comments there. So it's very important to have that kind of blockage so that even the spam bots that are coming in are not mm-hmm. able to do it. Gotcha. They just need a, a, an actual set of eyes to do it. Yeah. On most WordPress sites, you can log in by going to the URL slash WP dash admin. Yep. Um, I, you know, I, I happen to have worked on a site that you had done and I noticed that you changed yours. So is it bad to keep that there or is there a reason why you'd want to change that? And how do we go about changing it? Well, it's just an extra level of security because you're right. Everybody who knows WordPress knows that that's the first access to trying to put in your password. So adding a plugin that changes it, I can put that in my show notes, give it to you. Um, just an extra, just one more level of security. That's all that was. Um, backups are so important and you want to have a backup of your website, but also a backup, not only where your website is, but also on a different server, because if your server goes down, your backup goes down too. Gotcha. We provide daily backups for added security in three different places. So we have it on your website and then at your data center and then someplace else, the different data centers. I guess it really depends on your website. If you have a blog website that you're just doing once in a while, you know, you update it, you know, once a week or something, then your backups could be weekly. Um or once a month, but we do it daily because we have clients who are updating their website daily. Sure. Okay. Anything else we should be worried about with our websites? There's, there's always, there's <laughs> always more, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. Okay. And there you have it. Lori's put together a free security checklist for you. I'll put a link to it in my show notes at myweeklymarketing.com forward slash nine. I'll also include links to the other sites we talked about in today's episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you next time. Bye for now. 